morning it has already been a beautiful day we went running today on the beach we did I think maybe two miles I don't know <laughs> I, it's kind of hard to tell I need you like a rising sun let the light pour in and the colors run and after that we came back to the van and I have this hang board that I put up and we decided to like hang and also I tried to figure out how many pull-ups I could do today which I think today I only did three. During my run on the beach this day I had my headphones in and I listened to this 15 minute snippet of a podcast about mushrooms. The podcast is called Could Magic Mushrooms Treat Depression? And it's by Scientists Weekly. It was such an interesting podcast. If you've been staying up to date with my recent adventures, you'd know that I'm foraging mushrooms here in Oregon. And I just love learning about the properties of each one, whether that's healing and they're edible or if they're psychedelic. I mean, I haven't forged my own psychedelic mushrooms, but I do just find it fascinating to learn about mushrooms and all of the benefits they could have. This podcast dove into the recent clinical trials into psilocybin, which is the active psychedelic component in magic mushrooms, and talked about how it could be an effective treatment for depression. There was a lot of information in this podcast and I listened to it all on this app called Blinkist. Blinkist is an incredible app because it has information information from over 5,500 books and podcasts that are nonfiction and it has all the most important information and it jam packs it in like 7 to 15 minutes so it's perfect when you're driving to work or for me when I was on my morning run another cool feature that Blinkist has recently launched is the Blinkist connect so you can get a membership with Blinkist and then you can also have someone on your membership like for me that's my girlfriend Tori and we can both listen and gain information from Blinkist with no extra charge all of my followers can get a seven-day free trial off Blinkist and you can also get 25% off the Blinkist annual premium and that promo link is going to be in the description of this video if you want to check it out now we can get back to the video we have all of these leftovers it's like the fiber that the juicer left over left <laughs> left over I think I'm going to try to make like a I don't know if fritter is the right word but like a fried burger type thing like a savory apple burger i just don't know how to do this because i've never really done it before i'm gonna play around with it one of my favorite things to do while cooking is just completely improvising and playing around and kind of treating it like an art form so that's what i did here with these burgers i diced up sweet onions some tempeh jalapeno red bell pepper i also diced up garlic and then i put that in a bowl with the leftover apple fiber and some black beans and i mashed that up and then i added different spices so i started with salt and then i added red chili flakes black pepper i also added rosemary onion powder and garlic powder and then just a little bit of flour i mixed that all together and then i shaped these basically veggie patties and i had my girlfriend tori sprinkle on some extra flour on top put that all around the veggie patty and then i fried it these turned out so good we actually had a lot of leftovers so we used these in really creative ways throughout the week which was fun and it was just a great way to use all of the fiber that was left over from the juice because i often have leftovers and so it's a, just a great zero waste alternative honestly maddie worked on the bread and we got vegan cheese and avocado on it and we basically just have it in a sandwich i'm so excited We just drove 10 minutes into town and we got diesel and now we're heading to the grocery store to stock up on some stuff and then we're going to go to a new campsite because we're making our way down south to California. Right now we're in Oregon so 
Let's go to the grocery store and get some stuff. Not a person he won't ever seen what he's on. It ain't hard to see that I'll be forgotten when I'm gone, yeah. I don't know about tomorrow, so. I just restocked on some stuff. I have almond milk. I got gummy bears. I got made good vegan soft baked mini cookies. Ooh. I hope they're good. I have squash and zucchini. We needed onions and garlic, so I got that as well. Paper towels. This is like what we came for. We were out of paper towels and then all the other stuff. Just I got agave. Oh, good. I knew we needed agave. Asian chopped salads. Yum. We've been getting these because it's like so convenient. You got a couple of them? No, just one. Oh. Because I thought like when we quickly need to eat something to drive, it's been great. We were meant to live together Walking hand in hand together We were meant to live together We went for a hike at this trailhead today and we found some things in the forest. The first is yarrow. Maddie, our friend Maddie taught us about this plant and so we foraged some because we're gonna make a tea with it. It smells so good and very medicinal. And then we found these oyster mushrooms. They are shelf mushrooms so they were growing on a tree. There is a poisonous look-alike that makes you like sweat and vomit and all these like very bad symptoms but the gills don't go all the way down to the stem and also on oyster mushrooms there isn't really that much of a stem it's just kind of this knob so these are oyster mushrooms they smell very mushroomy and they were growing like this on a tree it was so cool and then this morning we went out and we got these chanterelles so we have some small ones we have big ones and they smell very fruity and sweet and again, they do have a poisonous look-alike called, I think it's called the jack-o'-lantern. But the difference is jack-o'-lanterns, their gills are more fleshy, kind of like the oyster mushroom here. It's like really fleshy. And the gills on the chanterelles are very hard and they smell fruity instead of felt smelling more like mushroomy that like jack-o'-lanterns would. So we're pretty sure these are chanterelles, but we're waiting for our friend to get back to us and let us know for sure before we cook them up and eat them. And before we do that, we also have to go into town to get water because I ran out. I have no water left except in my water bottle to drink. So we're gonna drive 15 minutes down south right now to the town of Brookings and fill up my water jug.
a 30 gallon water tank right back here and this is like what goes to my sink and I use it to shower. And I also have this hose. It's very thin, but it's 20 feet long. It takes a really long time to fill up water with this hose because it's so thin, but it doesn't take up that much space. So I really appreciate that. And to find places to fill up water, I use the app iOverlander. I usually have a pretty easy time finding water, but there have been some areas where it's more difficult or I have to pay, which is not a problem because it's never that much, but. <sighs> Gotta wait for this to fill up. Oh my god, someone just watched me do that. I cut up the oyster mushrooms and I'm going to cook the oysters and the chanterelles at different times because I want to like taste both of them differently. So I'm going to put this in the meal right now and I'm just going to season it very lightly just with like olive oil, salt, and pepper so I can really taste these oyster mushrooms. They're so meaty. Mm -hmm. All of those mushrooms cook down to this. We just got confirmation from our mushroom expert friend, Jacob, that these are chanterelles, so we're going to cook them. And I'm gonna do the same thing I did with these with the oyster mushrooms, just olive oil, salt, and pepper. But yeah, I, the oyster mushrooms cook down so small that there's not a lot, so I figured I might as well just do all of them, but I'm gonna have them in different batches so we can really like taste each one and how they're different. The mushrooms were really good in our lunch. I cooked it alongside rice and green beans and we all preferred the oyster mushrooms a little bit more, but both of them were really good. And after we had lunch, we played a few games of solitaire. We have been addicted to this card game for months now. And yes, you can play solitaire with more than one person. It's kind of a game of speed and it's very adrenaline filled and we're just addicted to it. And then after we played a few games of that, we went out and watched sunset on the overlook we're parked at. The sunset was so dreamy and golden and it really illuminated the water underneath the arches of the overlook we're at. And the moon was really magical after the sunset. For dinner, Tori made us some empanadas. It was kind of like a very small dinner. We only had three empanadas because the lunch was very filling and we were all pretty full after that. And I also boiled some water and I put the yarrow in with the boiling water. I also added some agave and a little bit of lemon juice. I kind of regret it. I wish I just put the yarrow in because it tasted so good and I wish I could have tasted it without all of the other flavors, but it was still really good. And we enjoyed that while watching Lord of the Rings, or actually it's the prequel to Lord of the Rings, which is Rings of Power. We have been obsessed with this show recently and we watch it almost every night on our projector. So we watched an episode of that and then went to bed.
I am making a matcha right now for Tori and I. And then we're gonna go on this hike. We're at a spot called Natural Bridges alongside the Oregon Coast. It's this really beautiful spot where the ocean has just carved in this massive arch. There's two of them. We saw sunset at a viewpoint last night here, but we wanna hike down and actually go on top of the arch which I feel like will be a little scary and apparently the hike is a little treacherous so I'm gonna wear my hiking boots and after we drink this matcha we're gonna go ahead and go down there thank you these last night and I think you can eat some of them but I just don't know they're so interesting like it feels like you wouldn't be able to eat these comes out of it seems toxic so fun it's like a toy a nature toy and we're helping them to reproduce was it worth the sacrifice right now it was such a stressful hike so I kind of want to get off of it but we did a little like meditation breath work up here because we were all a little anxious took some photos they turned out so good and now we're getting out of here because it's really scary how are you guys feeling so much better now that we're not on the cliff <laughs> that was terrifying I don't recommend. It felt like the most I've ever done something like do it for the gram. In my yeah, sky. yeah, true. I was like, why are we Same. risking our lives for this photo? Yeah. Once we got into the forest too, we found this lobster mushroom, and I know there's more towards the end of the hike. So we're gonna. I don't know if this this one like smells like it's kind of rotting. I don't. Let me see it. Look at uh, this lobster. one. Yeah. Ooh, we should cook them up right now. Yeah, we should. If you like shake them, it'll release the spores to help more growth. Oh. Oh, they're so pretty. We just got back from the hike. That was truly terrifying. And my heart's still beating a little fast. But on our way back, we found these lobster mushrooms. And I think we're going to cook them up for lunch. But first, I'm going to soak them in vinegar. Lobster mushrooms are really cool because we learned that it's actually a parasite that takes over the host mushroom. And it makes it orange. And then it has this like outer shell. And that's why it's called lobster is because it kind of reminds people of like the hard shell of a lobster but they're always very like irregular shaped so they're pretty cool but first I'm going to soak them I think I'm gonna do it in a tiny bit of vinegar water and salt like warm water and salt get those leggies out should have like maybe mixed the salt in the water first learned everything about love I'm cooking mushrooms after they soak in vinegar. Somewhere we just messed it up and we lost our grace. Now we know we did it all just to see that place. The sadness we had.
finished watching the prequel of Lord of the Rings. We've spent like the last couple weeks watching it together as a group and now we're going to move on to the OG movies which I'm really excited about but before we do that we are going to paint and learn about different plants or fungi in the area because if you can't tell I have been obsessed with mushrooms recently. This obsession started over a year ago when I watched Fantastic Fungi and I foraged my very first mushroom in the wilderness which was a porcini that was in Montana. Since then I haven't really foraged for mushrooms very much because it's always felt a little scary to me. There's so many mushrooms that are poisonous and can like literally end your life and so I've never really wanted to mess around with it but we're in this area on the coast of Oregon at the perfect mushroom time and we also have a friend who knows a lot about mushrooms in this area so every time we find a mushroom that looks edible we research it we find out the one that we think it is and we're like 99% sure it's that mushroom but we still send it to our friend for extra confirmation and once he gives us the go-ahead then we go ahead and cook it and eat it and I've also just had this excitement to learn about all the different types of mushrooms like mushrooms are so cool and today we saw a puffball mushroom which you can poke and it literally puffs out spores each puff has like a million spores in it and so that is going to be the mushroom I'm going to learn and draw about and I had this idea of creating like a club with Maddie and Tori where every single week we like paint and draw a plant and we each choose one or a fungi and then we come together and we teach each other about what we've learned and show each other our drawings. several ways that you can identify them one is they always come in clusters like earlier when we were in the forest and Maddie picked it up it came in like this group of like five different ones there's always fuzzy hairs on the cap and you can see them there um, you're so cute and the gills which is like the underside of it it runs all the way down to the ring this is my fern. It is a western sword fern, also known as Polystichium munitum, or munitum, depending on who you talk to. <laughs> what I thought was really cool is individual fronds can be anywhere between 1.6 feet to almost six feet tall. Wow. Which is crazy mm. to me. And the amount that they're standing up will depend almost entirely on sunlight. I did mine on the puff ball. I love your drawing so much. <laughs> and the Latin name is Lycoperdin perlatum, but it also goes by the common puffball, worded puffball, gem studded puffball, wolf, wolf farts, the devil's snuff box. Basically when it's young, they it looks white, it's an off-white color, and the top has these short spiny bumps called jewels, which are easily rubbed off and leave a net-like pattern on the surface. But then once it matures, it becomes more of a brown color, like the one that we saw today. <laughs> The last couple days, we drove from Southern Oregon all the way into Santa Rosa, California. But before we got here, we stopped at a campsite and we made some pizza with the Miyoko's mozzarella vegan cheese. And it's like you pour it on the pizza and it cooks so well. I think it's the best vegan cheese I've ever had. It was really delicious. We cooked it in Maddie's oven. I'm going to open this package that my friend Kathleen from the Crystal Shop or it's at your Crystal Shop sent me. She is just the sweetest lady and we've been talking for a while. Oh, so cute. Okay, right off the bat, there's tons of crystal stickers wait these are so cute we have like a pink box in here and then we have another box this one's gold we have some quartz in here Ooh, this looks like larimar i actually don't have any larimar right now either there's an egg 
Wow, this is like a Larimar themed box. I think she made these herself because I know she does macrame. So if you want one for yourself, definitely go check them out because this is so cute. I'm going to wear it right now. And I can make it tighter. Oh, it has a card that says happy birthday, Sarah. It looks like we have a little perfume or incest, in, incest, in, incense. God damn it. Why am I calling it incest? <laughs> That's like so not the word. Ooh, oh, I already know I love this smell. Wow, thank you so much, Kathleen. I know you're probably watching this. And this just made me so happy to unbox everything. So excited about the selenite ones. I also really love this Larimar egg, the necklace. Like there's just so much love in this package. And I'm so, so grateful. from Kathleen was so cute so I want to thank her and I also want to thank Blinkist for sponsoring this video and before I wrap up this video I wanted to remind you guys that there's a seven day free trial through the promo link in the description of this video as well as 25% off Blinkist annual premium so definitely go check that out if you're interested and as usual thank you for watching this video please like if you enjoyed it and subscribe because I post videos every Sunday see you guys in the next one bye